PwC Podcasts. We answer questions that are important to your company. Taxes, law, business, finance and technology. Good morning. Welcome to the new episode of PwC Podcasts. My name is Jakub Gołębiowski and I invite you to listen to the interview with our experts. Today we will talk about mandatory disclosure rules and what should you know about mandatory reporting in Poland. And today my guest is Robert Jurkiewicz. He's a partner at PwC Poland. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everybody. So, uh, the MDR require the parties that provide advice and assistance on tax to report cross-border on transactions. Am I correct? Yes, of course. So, let's start. The flow is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for listening to this podcast, which is uh, dedicated mainly to foreign entities and individuals with some Polish nexus. Today, I will concentrate on differences between the Polish mandatory disclosure rules and DAC6 directive. Additionally, I will elaborate on the Polish MDR requirements levied on non-Polish intermediaries and beneficiaries. So, since 1st January 2019, mandatory disclosure rules were introduced into the Polish tax system. In principle, the new rules implement DAC6 directive but additionally, they considerably extend DAC6 requirements. That is why the Polish MDR legislation has much wider scope compared to DAC6 directive. First of all, we have all DAC6 hallmark implemented in Poland. Secondly, some of DAC6 hallmarks are modified and thus cover broader scope of reporting. DAC6 hallmarks apply not only to cross-border arrangements, but also to the domestic ones. The Polish MDR cover all taxes binding in Poland, including, amongst others, VAT and excise duty. And finally, the Polish MDR provides four domestic hallmarks not provided by DAC6 directive. This wider implementation of DAC6 into the Polish tax system means that analysis of reporting obligations only based on DAC 6 hallmarks is not sufficient. On top of that, there are some differences in the terminology between Polish MDR and DAC 6. For example, DAC 6 uses the term a cross-border arrangement, while the Polish MDR uses the term a tax scheme. DAC 6 uses the term intermediary, while the Polish MDR differentiates this term and divides it into two roles in the reporting, a promoter and a supporter. A few words about the reporting deadlines, because this is very important. The Polish MDR requires the reporting of tax schemes uh, with DAC6 sources hallmarks in relation of which the first activity related to their implementation was made after June 25, 2018. In case of domestic tax schemes, in relation to which the first activity related to their implementation took place after 1st November 2018. In these cases, the reporting obligation is postponed until 30 June 2019 for promoters and 30 September 2019 for beneficiaries in case in the arrangement there was no promoter. Reporting obligation regarding tax schemes shared or implemented after 1st January 2019 arises, similarly as it is in DAC 6, within 30 days from the date the tax scheme is shared or implemented. However, it is crucial that deadlines for specific actions of supporters of tax schemes may be shorter. For example, five working days from the day of their support. What is worth to mention is that on January 31st, 2019, the Polish Ministry of Finance published official explanations regarding Polish MDR. Although explanations do not constitute a source of law in Poland, Compliance with them should give a protection similar 
to the one provided by individual tax rulings, so allowed to prove acting in a good faith. We believe that explanations will greatly affect the practice of applying MDR regulations in Poland. The explanations were presented on 102 pages and the Ministry of Finance announced that explanations will be amended from time to time. So it is important to track any changes to the explanations. Uh, all right, you've mentioned Polish domestic hallmarks and I would like to ask you, could you please elaborate on that? Well, we have four domestic hallmarks not provided by DAX 6 directive. These hallmarks are definitely the most problematic ones, both in terms of the interpretation as well as the identification of the role in the reporting. The domestic hallmarks, what is important, do not require to satisfy the main benefit test. On the other hand, they require to fulfill some thresholds, amount thresholds. The domestic hallmarks are based on income taxes, including deferred income tax. So let's analyze in more details these hallmarks as they are really critical in this whole exercise. So first of them is the characteristic of the arrangement in which the impact on the deferred part of income tax resulting from or expected in connection with the arrangement for the beneficiary is significant and exceeds the amount of 5 million Polish zlotych during the calendar year. 5 million Polish zlotych is around 1.2 million euro. The NDR explanations issued by the Polish Ministry of Finance indicates here that this hallmark does not cover, for example, market-to-market -market valuations and as a rule is dedicated to a tax planning the effect of which would be a movement in deferred tax assets or provisions. Let's move to the second domestic hallmark, which is the characteristic of the arrangement in which the tax remitter would be obliged to withhold a tax exceeding 5 million Polish zlotych during the calendar year if in relation to payment of amounts due or expected in connection with the arrangement, the relevant double tax treaty or tax exemptions would not apply. In Poland, withholding tax is levied on payments of dividends, interest, royalties, as well as on payments for intangible services like management, advisory or guarantee fees. The domestic withholding tax rate is 19% for dividends and 20% for interest, royalties and other payments. These rates, of course, would be reduced or even eliminated based on the proper double treaty taxation application or based on domestic exemptions, mainly based on parent subsidiary directive. So let's imagine that there is an arrangement, management services agreement. The supplier of the services is UK tax resident and the beneficiary is a Polish tax resident. The expected management fee, which is to be paid to the UK party, amounts to 7.5 million euro in the calendar year. On the double tax treaty between Poland and UK, such payments should be taxed only in UK as business profits. However, theoretically, if there was no DTT applied, the tax remitter, the Polish party to the transaction, would withhold 20% tax on that payments, which would be around 1.5 million euro, so more than 5 million Polish zloty. Such management services agreement satisfies the considered domestic hallmark and thus would be a reportable arrangement under Polish MDR. Well, time to move to the next domestic hallmark, which is the characteristic of the arrangement in which the income revenue of the non-Polish tax resident sourced in Poland, arising from or expected in connection with the implementation of the arrangement, exceed during the calendar year the aggregate amount of 25 million Polish lot, which is around 6 million euro. This hallmark refers to the Polish source of income, source of revenues, gained by non-Polish tax residents. Both the Polish Corporate Income Tax and the Polish Personal Income Tax Act 
provide an open list of examples of Polish source of income with respect to non-Polish tax residents. So let's imagine another example. There is an arrangement, IT maintenance agreement, fee for such services does not fall into withholding tax regime in Poland. The supplier of the services is a German tax resident and the recipient is a Polish tax resident. The expected maintenance fee amounts to 6 million euro in the calendar year, which is more than 25 million Polish lot. On the double tax treaty between Poland and Germany, such payments should be taxed only in Germany as business profits. Nevertheless, such IT maintenance services agreement will satisfy the discussed domestic hallmark and thus would be a reportable arrangement under Polish MDR. The same would apply, for example, to the arrangement, namely agreement, in which there are Polish stocks or shares transferred between two non-Polish uh, tax residents. And the revenue gained by the seller, the transferor, exceeds 6 million euros. Finally, there is a domestic hallmark last one, which is the characteristic of the arrangement in which the difference between the Polish income tax which would have been due in connection with the performance of the arrangement from the beneficiary being a non-Polish tax resident, if he had been such a resident, and the tax which is subject to actual payment in his state of tax residence exceeds in total during the calendar year the amount of 5 million Polish zloty, which is again 1.2 million euro. In other words, this hallmark requires a calculation of a hypothetical Polish income tax of the arrangement and comparison such tax with actual tax paid by non-Polish tax residents in its jurisdiction. If the difference is more than 5 million Polish zlotych, then the arrangement is a tax scheme which should be reported to the Polish tax authorities. This hallmark refers to all even remote Polish nexus of the arrangement in case such arrangement would not fall into earlier mentioned domestic hallmarks. All right, so we have the hallmarks, and now let's talk about the roles in reporting. Can you please tell us more about it? The Polish MDR provides three roles in MDR report, a promoter, a supporter, and a beneficiary. They are defined similarly to DAC 6 definitions of intermediary, expanded intermediary and the beneficiary. What is worth to underline is that the Polish definition of the promoter director refers to foreign individuals and foreign entities and indicates that such persons, if markets make available or implement the tax scheme, will be a promoter and will be obliged to report under Polish MDR. The MDR explanations issued by the Polish Ministry of Finance provide the example in which if there is an internal advisor, let's say a group tax head, and he or she advises to the Polish subsidiaries, then such a person and the entity in which he or she is employed could be a promoter or supporter of a tax scheme. Please note that the Polish MDR requires from entities being promoters or employing promoters to introduce and apply an internal procedure to prevent MDR non-compliance. This obligation is levied on entities whose accounting revenues or costs exceeded 8 million Polish zloty, which is around 2 million euro, in the year preceding the financial year. Okay, there are severe sanctions for not complying with the Polish MDRs. Uh, can you please tell us more about it? Indeed, the potential sanctions could be severe, not really huge. First of all, the Polish MDR regulation provides a sanction for lack of MDR internal procedure required for promoters. In such case, the penalty should not exceed 2.5 million euro. There are also personal penalties, criminal one, criminal one provided for failure to report or other non-compliance up to 5 million euro with regard to individuals responsible for such non-compliance. All right, so to sum up our discussion, what would you recommend to not 
Polish tax residents when it comes to MDRs? Can you give them few hints? Sure. If you or your entity have some Polish nexus, it could be a Polish subsidiary, Polish stocks or shares or revenues gained on the territory of Poland, whether through permanent establishment or not, you should definitely consider your potential Polish MDR reporting obligations, especially resulted from the arrangements which might satisfy Polish domestic hallmarks, which I mentioned before. If you identify yourself as a promoter of any tax scheme, then your entity should implement the MDR internal procedure required by the Polish MDR regulations. Thankfully, the Polish Ministry of Finance in its MDR explanations confirmed that it is possible to act via proxy while fulfilling the reporting obligations. So we definitely encourage to be fully compliant with the Polish MDR regulations. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope you will find it useful. In case of any questions, please contact me. My contact details are on PwC website. My name is Robert Jurkiewicz. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert, for all these hints or this useful knowledge. And thank you very much for listening to this episode and to Robert for interesting conversation. Thank you very much. Did you like this episode? Share it with your friends and follow us on social media.